everybody. Steven Jondre here from GunnaGeek.com and from Better Podcasting. Today, doing a video on how you can use the new NDI feature within Skype with XSplit Broadcaster, OBS Studio, and Streamlabs OBS. Now, for those of you not familiar with this, what it is is that there's this feature called NDI, and it's actually a streaming protocol. It's meant to send video over a network so that you can use it over with other computers and other systems and whatnot. Now, where, where a lot of podcasters and other video producers are using this is because before, if you wanted to do something like how we have on the official geek.com show or on Better Podcasting, where you have multiple videos going on of Skype participants, you had to go and use something that could basically capture the video output from Skype and then pull that in to the software like XSplit or OBS. Now, the way that NDI makes things easier is because if you wanted to have separate video streams of everybody, you basically had to run multiple Skype sessions. Now, if you have a group call going with multiple video participants, the way this works is with Skype 8 or higher, you can enable what's called NDI so that you can pull each of those video feeds independently of each other and pull them into XSplit or OBS or whatever uh, video switching software that you, that you use that has NDI capabilities. So let's go ahead and walk through here how you can use this. There are time codes in the comments, so if you want to go ahead and skip around, please check that out. The first thing that we're going to do is start by enabling NDI within Skype. How you do this is going into the Skype settings. So click on the three dots here, click on settings. Under the calling section, you'll find advanced, and you can click on advanced and toggle this allow NDI usage button. So toggle this on, and now this will enable the NDI section within Skype. If you don't see that within Skype, you might have problems with the account. There are some people who have reported that this feature is not always here for them. I've had that happen myself where it disappeared for a couple of weeks and then it came back. I guess it just depends on whether or not Skype is comfortable with the rollout or not. I'm not sure, but I have had that happen. So if you don't see this advance, it just means probably something is up and maybe they've just temporarily pulled the feature. But you want to make sure that you have allow NDI usage turned on. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and start a call with other participants. I'm going to go ahead and just get into this call here that I've got going with my co-host on the GunnaGeek.com show, Chris Farrell and Stargate Pioneer. Let's dial them up right now. So, say hello, Chris Farrell. Hello, Chris Farrell. Say hello, Stargate Pioneer. Hello, SP. So, as you can see, we now have a three-person Skype conversation going. You can no longer see me. However, you can see Chris and SP, and they are actually kind of seeing my video back. They're actually seeing the screen capture as we speak. So, that, that's all they're seeing. No, they're not seeing it. No. I'm seeing Chris again. Hmm. Well, we can go ahead and turn that on. There you go. Now, now you can. Hey, now hey you go. we're there good go. now. So what we're going to do is just quickly start off with XSplit and have a look at how you can bring those NDI feeds in. So the flag right now that our settings worked properly when we enabled them is at the top here. You'll see stop NDI. So that means that the NDI feature is properly working. If I was to do that right now, it would stop NDI and would just cause all sorts of problems. But Let's go ahead and go into XSplit here. First thing that we're going to do, and you'll see I have a mostly blank template. Ignore these couple of things here. You'll see why I have those in a moment. But in order to bring the feeds in, I'm going to click on Add Source. I'm going to go over to Streams, and then you'll see New Tech NDI Stream Beta. Now, what you see here is two different options. There's one that says my computer name and then Skype dash geek. And there's one that says my computer name and then Skype dash Stargate Pioneer. So this is telling me which of those individual streams I want to pull. So obviously the one that says Stargate Pioneer is Chris. No, I'm just joking. That's Stargate Pioneers. And then Chris is using this other account. And what this th these are here is... They're just the names of the person's Skype account that you're connected with. So if I want to grab Chris, I just click on this geek. wait a moment, and there he is. 
And then if I want to go ahead and grab SP, I do the same thing, streams, new tech, NDI, and I go get SP. Wait a second, and there he is. So now we have two individual streams. So if you want to go ahead and put an overlay, you can do that. And I've just gone and pulled our overlay that we use on Gunna Geek. And you'll see I'm going to go ahead and click that on. So I've pre-made this. This is a PNG file. And if I want, I can, oh, I'm on the overlay. If I want, I can come click on here. Align Chris to where I want to have him. Click over on SPs. Same sort of thing. Align him roughly where I want him. If I want, I can add myself. There we go. And now just move this PNG overlay up. And there you go. You can see you have everybody together. So what this is doing is it's, we are all connected by this say this Skype group call. Skype is taking the NDI streams, making one for Chris, one for SP, and in XSplit, it's pulling them in individually. And then if you see down here, this is my individual webcam. So that's the basics of how you pull an NDI stream specifically into XSplit. So let's go ahead and show the OBS side of things. I'll go ahead and close down XSplit. So the first thing that you'll need to do with OBS is to download the NDI plugin. There'll be a link for that in the comments of where you can get that. And when you go through the install notes, you'll see you'll also need to get the NDI SDK, which there is a link for in the install instructions. So install both of those, restart your computer, and then you're good to go for OBS. Let's go ahead and fire up OBS here. Wait for it to load. So it's very similar to how XSplit was. You'll see there's the sources box below. You're going to go ahead and click on the plus icon and you'll see right there NDI source on the next page. It's going to say create new. And so because I want to be able to know which one this is, I'll go ahead and name this as Chris. Hit OK. And here there's an option here for source name. If I click the drop down, you see the exact same things we saw in XSplit, which was there's the gunna.geek and the Stargate Pioneer. Let's go ahead and this time start with SP. And what's nice about this within OBS is you have some options of how it's pulling this. So you can either go the highest bandwidth, you can go lowest, or you can take audio only. So you have a few different options within OBS on how you're receiving that stream. We'll just leave it as the default settings. If I hit OK, wait a second. Oh, look, there he is. There's SP, SP wave. You can say something if you want, or you can just awkwardly smile. Something if you want, or awkwardly smile. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and again bring that down there. And we'll go NDI source again. Oh, I see I named that wrong. I put Chris the first time and then pulled SP. So now my sources are, are backwards. So I'll go Chris real or Chris underscore real. That's what we'll do. We'll go Chris underscore real. Hit OK. Again, we'll have some options here. We'll go ahead and pull that gunna.geek and wait for it. Now there's Chris. Or at Hello. least real Chris, because I'm remember, the, real I the other one wrong, which I believe you can actually go ahead and if you go into the settings, uh, somewhere you can rename that. I think it's under properties. I don't know. It is in here somewhere that you can re. Oh, there you go. Right click, rename, and we can rename that to SP. There you go. So now we know that this one's SP. This is Chris. And the same way I did before, if I wanted to, I could go and add my camera, but I'm not going to because it's really the same sort of thing from there where you can go and add an overlay and configure it and arrange it however you'd like. But that's how you pull NDI streams from Skype into OBS. Now, the third one that we'll be showing here is the Streamlabs OBS. Now, Chris Farrell. Let's yes, turn sir. it to you for a second here to explain what is Streamlabs OBS. It is a forked build of Streamlabs, basically that, or is OBS, excuse me, of OBS, basically that Streamlabs puts out, which has a lot of integrated tools and GUIs that help you better set up streams for Twitch and things like that. Now, the best part about what Chris just said is that the only thing you need to install if you're using the Streamlabs version is the NDI SDK. Remember that link that I. I showed you how you can get on the install instructions of the OBS plugin. Just install yes, that NDI SDK 
And then once you've done that, again, restarting, you'll be able to fire up Streamlabs OBS. And once it's open, same way that we did in the last two under sources, we're going to go ahead and click the plus button. And here we'll see NDI source. Click on that and uh, double click on that. And now it's going to, again, ask for the name of the source. So like we did before, this time we'll do it right. We'll go Chris and we'll go done. And it's again going to give me these options here so I can just go ahead and drag through and just like in the other version of OBS, you can adjust the bandwidth and some other settings. So we'll leave this as default hit there again, readjust as we want and we can go ahead and grab SP. We go NDI source. Give me the name. We'll go SP and we go add new source. And again, we can go grab SP right there. Hit done. And we have both Chris and SP together. So again, if I wanted to, I could add a picture, I can mask it, I can do all of that stuff, but we're not going to because refer back to the exploit section on how that could all come together. Now, one of the cool things that's actually possible with NDI is this here. So you see Skype has got the NDI in the corner. It's not just sending those streams able to be captured buy something locally on my computer. No, it's actually doing it over the network. So let's go ahead and flip over to the screen capture of my laptop, which you might have saw during the intro to my side. So now what you're looking at here is a screen capture of my laptop and I've got exploit running. So in the same way that I did previously, what I can do is I can actually pick up that NDI source over the network. So I can, just like I did before, click add source, go streams, and I'll just grab Chris's here, click on that, and there you go. You've got Chris. And if I wanted to, I could do the same thing with SP, but I won't waste your time on that. So really, you've got the possibility here of grabbing different NDI sources over the network and using them in different areas. So you can have Skype running on multiple computers on the same network. And this is just simply pulling the NDI stream over my local network from my main computer onto my laptop. And I had to do nothing else but just to start up Skype, get that NDI going and have a video switching program going. Now, one of the ways that you might end up using this NDI feed is to actually take what you've got in your video switcher and output it into another piece of software like back to Skype itself, because as it stands, in order for SP and Chris to see the feedback, I have to have a way that I can take the video out of my video switcher, such as XSplit, and send it over to them through Skype. Now, luckily with XSplit Broadcaster, there is the capability to have a virtual camera as well as with OBS, there's a plugin available. So what it does is it takes the output from those video switchers and puts it into a virtual camera for Skype to set up. Now, there are some video platforms, video softwares that do not have that possibility, or maybe you want to go ahead and send that feed out to another computer on your network. Say you had a Skype session going on my laptop and I wanted to be able to take the video stream from XSplit on my desktop and send it over to what's going on with Skype on my laptop. The way that I can use that is using the NDI tools. If you go to the comments, you'll see a link for NDI tools and in there is a virtual input. Once you have installed the NDI tools, you'll be able to launch the virtual input utility. And once you do that, you're going to have the possibility of using that virtual input within Skype. So I've gone to go ahead and set that up already. And if I go into my Skype options here, I'll go into the section where I can show or I can configure my camera. We'll just go in here, go settings and under video and audio. Right now you can see I'm using the camera that is a software called ManyCam. Well, if I change that over, I can switch to this new tech NDI video. And then once I've done that, I can launch the NDI virtual input. And that's going to give me in my lower right tray, the option to select an NDI stream. So what I can do in order, in order to output that 
is with an X split, if I click on Playout and I go New Tech NDI Output, it's now going to create an NDI stream out from XSplit here. So when I right click on the NDI Virtual Input tool, you'll see I've got Desktop. So I can go ahead and select whichever stream that I want. So this XSplit NDI stream is the one that XSplit created. And then when I go back over to my settings under audio and video, you'll see that this new tech NDI video virtual camera is picking up that stream and sending it back to SP and Chris. Now the same actually goes, I'll go ahead and close down XSplit here, and the same goes with OBS the regular edition. Unfortunately, Streamlabs OBS, there is not an option at this point, but under the regular version of OBS, I can go under tools, I can go NDI output, I can create a, an, an output from OBS, and if I go OBS output, I'll name it that, I can hit OK, and just like I did before, if I go down to my tray, I can right click on NDI, and I can select OBS output, and if I hop back into Skype, under those settings, under audio and video, you'll see it's picking up that OBS output. And that means that whatever the computer I have on the network could go ahead and pick up that virtual input, that NDI stream, put it into a virtual input, and display it back to a Skype participant. So that really opens up the potential to be able to take that output from XSplit or OBS and send it over to another Skype session or something else that can take that NDI feed and send it back to the participant. So hopefully that's helped you learn a little bit about how NDI works with OBS, XSplit and Streamlabs OBS, and also how you can output from those to be picked up by Skype. Uh, we've had a little bit of a rocky road using this over the last few weeks. It was there, then it was not there. Some The last couple of weeks, it's been more stable than previously, but we've had a couple of weird situations where sometimes we would start and it would be fine, and then all of a sudden we'd lose Chris or SP miss midstream or would just sort of flick in and out. So it is still in its infancy, but if you want to give it a try, you want to do it, that's how you do it. Chris, SP, any final comments before we wrap up this video? Good job making it all work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job. And I'm excited to try to give this a go sometime with one of my other shows. And now everybody can do exactly what we we do here. And they'll just take our name, we'll take everything and just, just push us out. It's just you, Steven. Okay, that's fair. All right, if you got any questions, please do comment below or head on over to GunnaGeek.com. And while you're there, check out the rest of the Gunna Geek Network at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Lots of amazing geeky podcasts and video shows. So there you go. Till the next video, I'm Stephen John Drew. That's SP down there. That's Chris over there. And that's my laptop in the corner still showing Chris's stream, but not SP's. Bye! <laughs> <laughs>